Hey guys, this is Mike. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, you're going to get to see us what uh, you're going to get to see us pour a concrete slab for a, what's going to be a large RV enclosure. So, Sean, the guy we're working for here today, he's a he'll actually be in the pour too. He's got a he's got a big fifth wheel RV and he does a lot of traveling with that. And in the winter, he likes to park it so he can live in it in the winter so this is what that's going to be for he's actually built the enclosure for this too so if you uh if you got any questions about about the enclosure part of it and you're thinking about building something like this let me know down in the comments and maybe i can get sean to respond or maybe i can help answer some questions about just how we built this and how we designed it it's about 50 by 22 if i remember right so it's it's a pretty good size slab it's uh, got a lot of gravel under it and he compacted it really really good Sean actually is the one that set up all the forms put in the wire put the rebar around those six by six posts and we're just coming in here to pour it and smooth it out for him and then he's gonna end up actually I do I do come back and saw it the next day I don't have that in this video but I did come back and saw some uh, expansion contraction joints in this too and then he can back right in this thing and hook his RV right up to it <clears throat> so Sean's the one running the chute we got a couple of trucks of concrete coming today I can't remember the exact yards but I think it was right around 18 yards and he's pulling up the wire mesh as we're pouring now one thing about wire with the concrete we use a three-quarter inch stone in the concrete and once you pull that wire up and get some of that stone in the concrete under the wire it doesn't go all the way back down to the dirt like a lot of people think so when you step on it yeah it probably goes down a little bit but the stones the rocks in the concrete itself help hold it up into the concrete even after you walk on it basically it's like putting you know small bricks a small piece of brick under the wire it's not going to just go back down to the bottom of the brick so with all the rocks in the concrete there's thousands and thousands and pounds of rock in this concrete that does help hold the wire up pretty good and that's the way we do it most of the time anyway the concrete's also got fiber mesh for reinforcement in it too so it's got a double reinforcement in it now what what else you're going to get to see in this video is how we screed the concrete old school now i'm 58 right now i started doing this when i was 15 and this is the exact same way that I was taught how to screed is the way that that's Eric and Darren up there in the back. They're getting ready to screed our pad, our wet pad in the middle. <clears throat> that's me walking there with a come along right now. But this is exactly the way I was taught how to screed. And we call this kick screeding. Now there's all kinds of different ways to screed concrete. Um, but this is the old school way I was taught about, you know, 40 some odd years ago and we're still doing it today it's still a really effective way to screed concrete it's pretty fast I've got some other concrete screeding videos uh, on my channel if you want to check them out but and we also use although we're not using it today because this has this slab actually has a, a crown to it where they're striking the pads right now is higher than the outside edges and Sean wanted a little bit of a crown in this case he ever gets any water in there it'll tend to want to run out the edges but uh, I mean, we also have power, uh, gas-powered screeds, battery-operated screeds, and today we're just going to screed old school, though. So we call this kick screeding. So as we screed the concrete, we're also kicking the mud back into where we pull our boots out, so we don't have to stop and fill those areas, and we'll just kick and screed at the same time, and it, we can pull. We can pull, you know, 20 feet by whatever the width of that screed is down pretty fast. I think we're using about a 10-foot screed today. We got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We got all kinds of different length of screeds, but because we're doing this one half at one time and one half at another with the crown in it, we're, we're just using a 10-footer right now. And then we're just going to bull float this. And that's, that's kind of all Sean wanted for a finish was just a smooth bull float finish. He didn't want anything super smooth and or he didn't want a broom finish, something rough. Just kind of wanted it bull floated. And where uh, I got the bull float with the rounded edges on it. So it doesn't really leave much of a line in there at all. 
And if there is just a little bit of a line, let's say the next day, you can use a rubbing stone, a concrete rubbing stone, and just kind of smooth that little bit of a line out from the bowl float. So right here, you'll get to see really good how we got a, what we call a wire hook, a wire puller. Sean just uses that as he as he dumps the concrete out of the chute. He'll just hook onto that wire and tug it up in there. And what Darren Darren's right behind the chute, and then Eric is behind him. Where that's we call that kind of breaking the concrete down and then tuning it in. So those guys are just trying to get it as close as they can by eye to the finish level, and then we can screed the concrete afterwards without hopefully without it being too high or too low there is a couple stakes in the middle although you can't really see them too good in the video there's a couple stakes with a, a nail through them at the height that we want the concrete at so we'll just once we get enough concrete in there we'll mag a pad around that stake that has the nail in it right to the level of the nail and then we'll pull the stake out and then that's what we use to go by for our level in the middle and those were all shot with a laser beforehand you can see around that six by six post right there Sean's got some rebar tied in around that to make sure that all holds together really really well because there's probably only about six or eight inches of concrete on the outside of those and then Luke's in the background he's kind of magging magging the edges even with the top of the form And we'll get most of this poured out. You can see we stopped right there. Now Luke's magging the pads, and then he's pulling the stake out, and then we put an X in the pad when it's right to grade. And Sean's way over there on the left. He's putting that form in. We took that form out so we could back the trucks right inside. So he's just resetting that, putting it, the pins back in, setting it back to grade. And that's me and Darren on the screed right now. Darren's been with me the second longest. He's been with me at the time I'm making this video, almost 30 years. I think it's around it's between 28 and 30 years now. It's been a long time. And then Eric, the one in the white tank top, he's he's also worked for me for a long, long time, over 20, well over 20 years. But he's also a school teacher, so he doesn't work full time anymore. He only works summers and sometimes on vacations. And then Luke in the background there, the one in the darker shirt, he's worked he's worked for me well over 20 years too. So we get a really, really experienced crew here, probably 100 years of experience in pouring concrete like this between the four of us. And I'm the oldest, I'm 58. Darren's 48 and Eric's about 47 and Luke is around 44 right now. So kind of... I think it's about time we, we found a younger guy and, and hired him and started teaching him the trade so we can we can mix in a little bit of uh, some younger ages with us older guys. <laughs> but that's that's how I was taught screening right there. And we, we screeded that way for years and years and years before all these power screeds came out. And I mean from from little floors like this one to there would be times when we do floors that are 10,000 square feet, 15,000 square feet. Um, pours, I've been on pours that are 1,000 yards. We've poured in six or eight hours. Screeded it all like this, you know, 18 inches thick, 6 inches thick, 10 inches thick, all different thicknesses. Some, some of them had double mats of rebar. We had to walk on the rebar from schools to hospitals, parking garages. You know, industrial buildings, um, high rises. I did all that commercial work before we, before we started doing just this residential stuff. So, what do you think? Do you think screeding concrete like this? How do you think it works? What do you have? You ever tried it? Um, it's not too bad to learn. Probably the the screeding part with the rod with the arms isn't too bad. It's getting the kicking down and screeding at the same time and not dig in with the screed not leave a not leave a dip with the screed or a hump with the screed you know is is what takes a, a, a day or two of screeding like this to, to really figure out and then after you get it figured out it's pretty much just like riding a bike like anything else 
you don't you don't forget it <laughs> like Eric Eric can go teach school for whatever eight or nine months and then come back in the summer pick up the rod the first day and he can kick screed like that without forgetting it so it's it's pretty good so Darren's just gonna clean up the mess we made right there I'm gonna bow float this and then uh, you'll see right at the very end how smooth that bow float makes it with very very few lines and then that's gonna do it for this so I want to know in the comments um, you think you'd ever put a, a structure or a slab like this for your RV if you have one um, would, would you th you think this is pretty cool Sean's Sean's done a lot of building he's built his own house he built a house for his daughter built a house for his son so he's a pretty good builder as, as well as a, a concrete guy he's done concrete his whole life too but let me know down in the comments guys what you think Yeah, this is a 49 by 21. It's a carport for a big fifth wheel RV. That's Sean right there. He's the homeowner. He used to do some concrete back in his day. He's a retired firefighter right now, 30 years as a firefighter. Um, but he also had some foundation form. So he did he did uh, frost walls and basement walls for years and years and years too. So he's gonna back his uh, RV right in here and leave it for the winter, living it in the winter actually. We got a garage full to do for them over there still, but as you can see, it's raining here today. Didn't expect any rain, so luckily this thing has a roof on it. But that's the RV floor we did. Thanks, guys, for watching. We'll see you on the next one.